Hi there, Dr. Ellen Christensen here, and I want to talk to you about your hormones and how to best test them. There's a pretty strong sense that having healthy hormones is critical to being healthy and happy and lean and energized and all those good things, but there's a lot of confusion and controversy about how do you measure them and if you should measure them. Well, if you should measure them, that's an easy one. Heck yeah. <laughs> you want to know whether or not they really are the source of your symptoms, whether they are causing the fatigue, the insomnia, the hot flashes, the weight gain, the dry skin, the chronic pain, the digestive issues, the anxiety, you name it. First off, see whether or not they're the culprit. And you want to know if so, which hormones. Past that, you want to know, is it too much, too little, or wrong time? They can all be factors. And if that's not enough, you'd also want to know now that you're doing something about your hormones, is it working or not? Are you making steps in the right direction? Those are all benefits and values of testing. So there's debate about how to test. And boy, I started practicing in the mid 90s and that was when some of the alternate methods for testing hormones came about. I've used everything, the blood, the saliva, the urine, literally hundreds and thousands of times each. And I've gotten a real strong sense what tests are accurate, which ones are reproducible, meaning that if you repeat it on the same person in the same time, you get the same data, and then which ones are really important for you to feel better. And here we go. <laughs> Blood tests work great for hormones that come from your thyroid, your ovaries, your testicles, and a lot of your adrenal hormones. So your thyroid, we wanna know how your brain's talking to your thyroid, which hormones are coming out of it, whether or not you're attacking the gland, and whether or not the gland is inflamed. And there were times to where some labs did salivary panels for these, but they've pretty much dropped off because even the biggest advocates have acknowledged that they're not, not as accurate. And that's really because those hormones are present in such microscopic amounts that the, t the amounts in the blood are small enough, they're hard to measure. The amounts in the saliva are thousandths of the amount in the blood, so tiny fractions and also harder to measure accurately. So those are all blood tests, and that's gonna be a TSH, free T3, free T4, antithyroglobulin, antithyroid peroxidase, thyroglobulin, and reverse T3, as far as a real good workup for your thyroid. So moving on, let's go to testicles or ovaries. And for these hormones, blood also does really well. There are a lot of salivary tests, and there are some urine tests. And I've used these over the years, and salivary tests across the board, the hormones from those glands, we call them steroids. They're chemically categorized as steroids. Steroid's kind of a loaded term, but all it means made of cholesterol. So testosterone, progesterone, estradiol, estriol, estrone, uh, these are all hormones that are made from cholesterol. They're cholesterol byproducts, so to speak. And they're really large molecules that can't consistently get into the saliva. So the same problem shows up. They are there, but not in consistent fractions. The other difficulty is that the saliva has such a strong overrepresentation of free hormones. What I mean by that is those hormones are in two states, free and active or bound and inactive. And we've got a sense on free levels in the blood or bound levels in the blood, but not as big of a body of data on free levels in the saliva. And then a third drawback is if you're taking some kind of hormone therapy, the salivary levels can be very inconsistent, meaning that right after you swallow a pill or apply a cream or something, your salivary levels are going to be sky high for a few hours and they're going to plummet. So it's hard to gauge whether you're getting way too much if you measure right afterwards or none if you measure a few hours later. So blood is best for those. And both genders, a good blood workup can include testosterone free in total, ideally, along with it, dehydrotestosterone, and then estrone, uh, progesterone, estradiol, and estriol. And that gives a good gauge of the testicles and the ovaries. Now, if you're a woman having regular menstrual cycles, you wanna do that right around the third week of your cycle. So we call day one, the first day your period starts, and then you count forward, now, assuming you're on a 28 to 30 day cycle, we want this to be between about day 17 to 23. And that's most important for the estradiol and the progesterone. Those two hormones, you won't be making them in consistent amounts at other types, other times of your menstrual cycle. 
So you wouldn't really know if a high or a low was a problem or just timing, just how it played out and when you measured it. Everybody else, there's no real timing that's relevant. So now we've got the testicles and the ovaries covered. Now we've got the adrenals. And here I actually mix and match a little bit. So there's several measurable hormones and a few practically measurable hormones. So possible hormones to measure would include androstenedione, which is one of the weak adrenal male-like hormones, one of the masculizing hormones that both genders make. Also, there's aldosterone, which is a big part of balancing your sodium, potassium, and fluid levels. So those are two of the adrenals do make. Aldosterone measurements are not accurate. You know, you can stand or sit, or you could have some water recently, and it can change so much. So not as meaningful. Androstenedione, measurable, but one that we don't have as big of a body of data of what its relevance is. So I don't really focus on those much. We do have pregnenolone, DHEA, and cortisol as the main adrenal hormones. I love to get those three through the blood at a single point in time, preferably in the morning. Now, we don't stop at that. The DHA and pregnenolone and cortisol, they're all also measurable through saliva. And there's many salivary panels that will give you all of those. You know, when I ask someone to invest in their health, I want them to focus on what really matters. I encourage salivary tests just for cortisol, just for the four cortisol readings. And they really shine because they can accurately give a picture of how you make cortisol as the day progresses, how much you make morning versus noon versus afternoon versus night. And that's an important thing to be aware of. There's few people that have bad adrenal disease to where they just can't make it or they make crazy amounts all the time, but there's a lot of people that have adrenal dysfunction, which means they make the wrong amounts at the wrong time. And we can only catch that through the salivary panels. I like to have a blood reading of cortisol for someone also. There are some times to where they may have bleeding gums or they may have other factors that make their salivary levels look a little bit weird. And if we have a blood test on them as well, preferably about the same time of day as one of the salivary samples, we can catch that and we can make really good sense of it. So cortisol, I like both saliva and blood. DHA and pregnenolone, I like through the blood. Cortisol, you want to get multiple times a day. And with that, you will have perfect clarity on your current hormone state and have some ideas on how to go about improving your health. Thanks for hanging out with me in this beautiful place. Dr. Christensen here. We'll talk in real soon. Bye-bye.